You're listening to 7-Minute Stories with Aaron Califato. I'm Corey. I coordinate the podcast. We've decided to do a weekly t-shirt giveaway. All you have to do for a chance to win is subscribe, rate, and write a review on Apple Podcasts. If you don't have Apple Podcasts, you can share a favorite episode on social media using the hashtag 7-Minute Stories. Make sure and listen as I'll announce a winner each week. Now, on to the story. This episode, The Spotlight, or... A love letter to Richard Greenberg. My first audition for a play was my sophomore year in college. I had just gotten rejected from the music conservatory at Bowling Green State University. I had gotten in sort of a argument fight with the guitar professor there, and you can hear more about that story. It's called The Audition, and it's part of the 7-Minute Stories catalog. But anyways, continuing from there, I'm at school, and I'm directionless. I'm aimless. I'm an undecided major. I don't know what I'm going to do. My dreams of being a guitar player really were over, but I had heard from someone down the hall in my dorm that there was this audition for this play. I I had done a few student films in high school and stuff, but I loved movies. I loved telling stories casually, and I loved just talking. And I just thought, well, maybe it's not maybe it's not a far stretch to audition for a play. Now the play was called The Author's Voice by Richard Greenberg. Never heard of it, but I read the play and I thought it was really cool. So I go and I do this audition. The professor holding the audition. I think his name was Odie. I don't know why I think that, but I'm pretty sure it was called, it was Odie. Anyways, I don't know his last name, but this guy, really cool dude, is holding auditions for this play, and I don't know anything about acting. So I show up to the audition. He goes, do you have your monologue prepared? I said, yes, I do, sir. And I do essentially my best Al Pacino impression for the audition. I think I just did an Al Pacino monologue from Sen of a Woman, that movie where he plays Colonel Frank Slade. And so when I do the audition, I'm just, I'm just doing Al Pacino and it's like, you know, I don't know. And I just, it's ridiculous, but he saw something in me and he casts me and we do the performance. It's in a small theater and it's a big deal for me. Like it was a huge accomplishment and my family came and people from the outside of campus came and the drama department And I thought my performance was pretty good because I got a lot of reactions from the audience when I did it. And I thought this could be my thing. I could be an actor, right? Well, the weird thing was, for the rest of my college career, I never got cast in another play. I mean, don't get me wrong. I auditioned. I auditioned. I auditioned all the time. But they kept casting other people. And it really pissed me off because it was a small community and the same people kept getting cast. And I thought to myself... I'm better than these guys. I mean, I wasn't necessarily trained, but I felt like I was more effective. Maybe I was just an arrogant 20-year-old punk, but I really felt that I was a more raw talent. But still, despite my best efforts, I never get cast. It got to the point where it was my last year in school, and I auditioned for The Christmas Carol, you know, Scrooge and all that stuff. There's a lot of amazing parts in that play. And I was down with any of them. I auditioned. I thought I killed it. They didn't even cast me in the entire play. In fact, what they had me do in the theater department was run Spotlight. If you can imagine this torture, my dreams of being in another play, my dreams of being on the stage. And now (laughs) during all of rehearsal, And through the entire run of the play, I have to run spotlight and shine the spotlight on the actor that I wish I could be on the stage. It was a very humbling experience. And I didn't do humility too well in my early 20s. And so during rehearsals, I got really upset and I decided to rebel. So I start moving the spotlight (laughs) off of the actor who's performing. So every time he would do his monologue, I would move the spotlight somewhere else on the stage. And at first they thought, what the hell's going on with the spotlight guy? Maybe it's an accident. Maybe he's got some issues, too much coffee. Out late last night. But no, it was Aaron literally throwing a tantrum and rebelling and not shining the spotlight where it should be. So the director storms up. 
and he walks into the little spotlight room and he's like, what are you doing? And I said this to him, literally, I said, you know what? It's been three years and I haven't got cast in a play here and I'm pissed off and I deserve to be on that stage. That's where I deserve to be. And he gives me this big spiel and it was very thoughtful. And he was like, listen, man, sometimes you got to learn that you're part of a collective, that it's not always about being on stage and that you'll get your chance and all this kind of stuff. And I took it in stride and I was out of line to this day. Now, I still think they had some issues with talent evaluation. I'm just saying, I'm just saying they, I still think that because I don't see any of the people that they were casting in college doing a lot of work in this industry. I was just saying, anyways, I was a jerk. I was 20 years old and all I wanted to do was to be in theater. And so this just fueled me even more that when I went out to New York city upon graduation, I was even hungrier. And so I end up auditioning and getting into this conservatory, which was a big validation for me. So I'm at this conservatory and then I'm going through that. And I have some of the most amazing experiences of my life. And I'm sure I'm going to share a lot of them on seven minute stories. But at the end of the conservatory, we end up doing this play that you have to audition for. And it's called the Moderati and it's by Richard Greenberg, the same guy, the same author of the play that I was first cast in in college that spark this interest in acting to begin with. And so I get this nice part. I do it for a showcase at Michael Howard. I'm in the performance and there's quote unquote agents in the crowd. It was like a big deal. And I was on cloud nine. And during the run of this performance of the Moderati, you know, I'm in New York doing that, but I live in New Jersey. And one weekend to pay the bills, I'm slinging cell phones, by the way, in a mall. And so one weekend I'm in the mall, I'm slinging cell phones at a kiosk in the mall for AT&T. People are walking by, hey, how you doing? You want a cell phone? You ever talk on the phone before? I'm one of those guys. And this guy walks up to the kiosk and he says, hey, I'm looking for a plan. I said, what's your name, sir? And I type in his name and I look it up. It's Richard Greenberg. The, the actual author. And I look up at him. He looks at me. I go, Richard, this is crazy. The first play I ever was in was your play, the author's voice. And I'm in one of your plays right now. I want to get out there. Maybe one day you can cast me in one of your plays. This is my dream come true. Isn't this ironic? He was like, yeah, man, keep at it. Now, I really want the unlimited plan for at and and I looked at him and I said, no problem, Richard. And I gave it to him and I gave him a discount. He said, bye. He walked away. Uh, since then, I've never been in another Richard Greenberg uh, play. I've never seen Richard Greenberg again. But Richard, if you're listening to this, I just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for writing your plays. They literally were the vessel for me to start acting and start this journey into storytelling you not only gave me a start and an opportunity with your words, you gave me the confidence and the belief that I could be a storyteller too. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed this week's story. I just wanted to take a couple of seconds to tell you how important it is to me and how committed I am to making sure that seven minute stories is an authentic space where you and I connect through the art of storytelling without any dependency on ads or advertisements or anything like that, that we make this thing an a hundred percent listener supported podcast. And you can be a huge part of making that possible by going to seven minute stories, pod.com. That's the number seven minute stories, pod.com. And when you're there, click the merch tab on the website and buy yourself an awesome t-shirt or an amazing hoodie. And I know we're going to keep adding more stuff to that merchandise page. So keep checking back with it. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you next week.